Lionel, of course, is LionelMedia.com, and he's on PIX11 News in New York, and I always uh, in, uh, in, enjoy having him on to give his perspective. He's in the top most important radio talk show host of all time, according uh, to uh, Talkers Magazine and more, LionelMedia.com. Hey, Lionel, uh, we're only got about two minutes before we go to break, but I threw out a bunch of stuff here. We're going to come back and get into free speech attacks and drones and everything that's happening in Obamacare and all of it. But what do you think the nature of the universe is and what do you think about the people running the planet? Well, the first thing is, by the way, you never rant. Don't ever say you're ranting. I dig you. I understand what you're doing because sometimes you have a tremendous amount of information that you have to get through this very small funnel that we call radio because your brain is on fire and awash in ideas. So don't ever uh, uh, apologize for that. Let me tell you what happened this week to me, which blew my mind. Last week, as you know, was the 15th anniversary of the murder of uh, President Kennedy. And I talked to a young man, a young man who had never seen the Zapruder film. Believe it or not, I was sitting side by side with him. Don't ask me how he missed it. He had heard about it. He saw it maybe in segments. He saw the portion that is the most horrible. This is, of course, the, the president's brain, the, the, the misting of the president right there before our eyes. And he let out a shriek and a bit of an expletive. And I said, let me ask you a question. I said, you know something about inertia. Where do you think that shot comes came from? He said, well, the front. I said, well, guess what? This is what the conspiracy theories are about. They say it came from the back. And I saw in his face a disbelief and a concomitant terror. And I thought, this is where we've gone. Alex Jones here with a very important announcement for truth seekers. We've carried a lot of amazing films and books over the years on the online video bookstore at Infowars.com. And out of all the titles we've carried, one stands out because it is just so chillingly convincing. And that's Dreams from My Real Father by Joel Gilbert, available at Infowars.com. This film exposes the fraud that Obama is like nothing I've seen. If you want to know who Obama's real daddy is, this is the film for you. Don't forget, your purchase supports our broadcast and our growing media network. You'll also find it at InfoWarsShop.com, None Dare Call a Conspiracy by Gary Allen, the book that woke me up. We're also carrying Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21 by Rosa Corey. This book is coffin nails to the globalist takeover. The Greater Good, the most professional and up-to-date film I've ever seen exposing the scourge that is vaccines. These titles and a lot more are all available at InfoWarsShop.com. I like Lionel because he's not left or right. He's just a common sense, I guess kind of libertarian type fella. And he's got just great commentary, as you can see on his site, not just if you're in New York watching his television show, at LionelMedia.com. He joins us for the rest of the hour. And I do want to go through a smattering of news here with him, but finish up with this awakening, or, or I haven't heard the rest of the story, or did the guy go into deep cognitive dissonance denial when he finally saw the Subruder film? But we're going to go back to Lionel here in just a moment. Uh, Jay Carney, a uh, perfect name, a carnival barker. Nothing against folks that have the last name Carney, but come on. I mean, if the, if the shoe fits. And he's up there saying, you can keep your health care plan under this. And the site's working fine, even though the site's still not working. And folks, they can't have it work. Because then people will find out what was in the bill, written by foreign insurance companies. <laughs> I mean, Mitt Romney helped write it. I mean, the, the Republican fat cats want to keep it. It's a giant corporate tax, a screw job. But if you say you don't like it, you're racist. Anyways, Carney's on TV right now looking like a child who was caught basically, uh, you know, in the closet doing you know what, and mom opens the door. I mean, he just looks like he is just emanating, I'm a liar. And remember, Congress has a 6% approval rating now. I'm going to get his take on that, Lionel's take on that. But Lionel, finish your story. So go back. You see the head of the president vaporize the whole back of his head, brains splattering all over the back of the vehicle. Even if someone's never fired a gun or never been hunting and, you know, you shoot a deer on the side of the head, the other side blows off. Shoot a deer in the front of the head, the back of the head blows off. I don't want to get graphic here. Uh, but the point is, you see war films, whatever. Everybody knows you shoot somebody in the front of the head, back of the head blows off. But so so, so this, this man you're talking to finally sees this. You're a former prosecutor. You know how to put evidence on. Uh, continue. Well, what I said was, I said, now, I, I said, th this is not to say 
that this event is not without um, alternative theories and hypotheses. That's not the point. But what has happened, Alex, and you know this very well, is that we have taken this term conspiracy, a conspiracy theory. You know, the great Gore Vidal, whom you've uh, interviewed, who I think is just, <laughs> I mean, I watch him sometimes, and he's, to me, still alive. Some of the stuff he said speaks to me so well. He said he was not a conspiracy theorist. He was a conspiracy analyst. And he said there will come a day, if it's not already here, where it will be an article of faith that there are no conspiracy theories. Now, this word conspiracy merely means the confederation, the union, an agreement between two guilty parties to effectuate something. Most crimes, if you think about it, of any worth involve more than one person. Yeah, there's a lone wolf here and there. So the word is very, very black and white in, in criminal statutes, but it has taken, Alex, a new frame. It means crazy, far-fetched, paranoid, baseless. The other day, somebody was, I was, I'm very concerned about a number of things, obviously, in terms of uh, this as well, but what we're eating and, and GMOs and labeling. And I asked somebody a question. I said, what is it? And it's because, of course, many, many uh, big companies, Monsanto and DuPont and others and Big Agra, have shown a concerted effort to try to dissuade us from labeling. So I asked this happened to be the same person, this question. I said, what do you not want to know that you're eating? So let me repeat that. What do you not want to know? Ground glass, asbestos, calories, fat content. Tell me what you know. And he said, well, of course, I want to know everything precisely. Why do you think that there is such a concerted and expensive effort to keep GMO contents from you? And he said, oh, is that a conspiracy theory? I said, wait a minute, stop. Conspiracy theory does not mean evil. Now it's gone from, you know, unrealistic uh, paranoia to somehow evil. This word has now enveloped everything. And then we have this group of people. And Alex, these people scare me. This is the professional skeptic. This is a person, and I love uh, Penn and Teller and Penn Gillette's done some wonderful things, and some of the skeptics people have been very, very good, and the amazing Randy and done some wonderful stuff. But they start off with the premise a priori that I'm going to debunk something that you're advancing. That's intellectually disingenuous. If you want to, I'm sure you've run into these people as well atheists. These are people who think not only do they disbelieve or they are non faith. But they start off with the premise that a person of faith, you or others, are insane, baseless. So you have these groups of people. And what's happening, Alex, is this, this anti-intellectual argument has now become personal. And you also meet people, and I'm going to tell you, this is the pro-conspiracy people. These are people who, to use that word, and I'm going to embrace it. I'm not going to fight it anymore. I'm going to use it as shorthand. There's the other end that believe they can make reality by whatever they make up and whatever they say is true. That's the extreme of conspiracy theory. But that's what I found is that you can say they're devaluing the dollar and they go, you're a conspiracy theorist. They use it as a crutch when you're not intellectually informed to say Obama is not related to Dick Cheney. And you say, no, actually, he's his ninth cousin. He, here's Ancestry.com. Oh, they can just make that up. No, Obama admits it through his mother's family. So, so it's a way where the people denying conspiracy theory are, are saying they can choose reality. And then the extreme conspiracy people, they believe that they're like fiction writers, that when they write it, it's like they wrote it in starlight, it makes it come true. So there's there's both extremes of delusional people that meet around the back. Precisely, but there's also something here that's happening. You know, I, I told you that my dream one day is to be the psychologist general, not the attorney general, not the surgeon general, but the psychologist general. And I would be uh, empowered to create memes and themes and understandings and kind of a, an understanding of what is real and what isn't real. There's something called, speaking of Gore Vidal again, he said, we are the United States of amnesia. Just, it seems like yesterday, uh, Mr. Kerry was saying to us that we must act immediately in Syria or else we will have hell to pay. Syria, 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 Syria. All of a sudden, he perhaps made a slip of tongue. Uh, Medvedev or Putin took him up or called his bet. 
And now Syria is off the mainstream media map. Lindsey Graham was saying we would be nuked in South Carolina by Syria if we didn't attack them. CBS News. <laughs> you see, you know, Alex, I must say something. If you've never heard the Alex Jones show, what you are is you are a citation freak. And, and, and the lawyer in me really loves this. In, in law, you have to have a citation. You can't say it's against the law to uh, moperies against the law. Who says? Section 220. So it's it's in my, my nature. I don't think you have ever given, and I've listened to you for years now, an opinion based upon just an opinion and not based upon some fact or statute. The things that you will read on a daily basis by their very nature to the uninitiated, to people who have been lulled in this sense of kind of like, um, you know, leave it to beaver land, the 50s, black and white, everything's fine. You've said some things that absolutely would blow my mind. You say, don't take my word for it. It's in the telegraph or it's here or it's there. That's the thing that is you are the master of this. Pattern. Oh, no, please. I mean, enough of that. I mean, listen, I just look at the news. I see the pattern historically repeating itself. And I know the history of eugenics. I know where it comes from. I know who set up Planned Parenthood. I know I, I know the players. And so then I get called a conspiracy theorist or they point at wacky folks that think, you know, space aliens, you know, are secretly running the White House. And, and it, you know, it, it's all just insane. But uh, shifting gears into a whole bunch of issues, what do you make, because I know your commentaries have covered this, on Obamacare? Because if you analyze it, they on MSNBC say that I'm a deeply racist, with, with no citation, by the way, no clip of me saying something uh, even racist, much less deeply racist, and that I influence the Boston bombers, no citation, because I don't like Obamacare, this is two months ago, saying it was a giant scam by offshore banks to rip us off. Well, I know who lobbied and wrote it, and now it's happened, and it's been ruled a tax to private groups, and I've been called a conspiracy theorist. If you criticize it, I guess you'll be called a heretic as well. What do you make of Obamacare and where it's going and what's happened to the president? Okay, well, it is a tax, according to Chief Justice Roberts. There was a basis that it was upheld, if I recall correctly, at least the, uh, the uh, private mandate. That's right. Let me uh, uh, bring this up, and I'm going to bring a very, very, uh, perhaps too base, but this is what amazes me. Alex, there is not a pizza delivery shop. There is nothing that does not have a website that works. Nothing. I had suggested one time in, in passing that perhaps maybe the administration or the government should turn to porn sites because they are most proficient at getting out their product. I have heard of a lot of things. Funding problems, okay. We didn't anticipate the uh, sign up, okay. But not having a website that works. When John Stewart and his writers of, of uh, The Daily Show speak to this, you know it's a critical rock bottom. What I don't understand is simply this. When a person becomes the commander in chief or the chief executive of this country and they say X, and X does not seem to be the truth anymore, why doesn't everybody, as a citizen, call that president out, irrespective of the party or irrespective of the man or the woman? I don't understand that. So I am absolutely beyond explaining this anymore, and it's become a comedy of errors. And what's even more interesting are the people who are trying to say the apologists for, I guess, not so much the administration, but the event that no, no, you really don't understand it. These things aren't that bad. But I got to say something to you, and you, you, you mentioned this before. There is so much. You started off with this absolute amazing story. Something happened this week, which, and you said this, and it goes back to my psychologist in general uh, part, if you don't mind. And that is the habituation, the conditioning, and the generalizing of us to more and more surveillance. When 60 Minutes mentioned the Jeff Bezos octocoppers and, and helicopters and that sort of thing, what this is, is again a systematic um, acceptance as to how cool things are. And I did a commentary and I said, wait a minute, let's look at a couple of things here. Michael Huerta, the FAA chief, says that by the year 2015, there's going to be 7,500 drones, UAVs, and who was going to license these folks? Forget the fact of congested airspace. Forget the fact that these things are run by GPS and they can crash. Forget the fact that they have metal blades that can hurt people, that batteries can blow up.
Forget the fact that they can get sucked up into jet turbines. All of that. Who is asking these questions? But what happened was the sheeple looked at the gold watch and they said, isn't this cool? Isn't this neat? Imagine. Now, how somebody's going to drop a box of, I don't know, socks in your backyard? I don't know how this is going to work. That was, I don't want to say a beta test, but that was part one of the acclimation and the habituation that we have to this idea of drones. That and drones by the way, by the way, I saw articles in Wash Tech, like in 1999, back when Washington Post had that tech magazine, I read it on air, bragging that they were gonna habitualize us to chips in our bodies and drones. And, and so even when they're on record saying they're gonna do this to us, we're still a conspiracy theorist for, for pointing out that there is an agenda. And, and listen, here is a conspiracy theory. Most stuff I do is not theorizing, but as the police or prosecutors, you've gotta figure out what the criminals are doing and try to figure out their plan, unless you actually you know, tap their phone or whatever, or, you know, infiltrate their group. Well, I've studied these globalists, so I know how they think, what their end game is. They think they're so bulletproof politically, they're all over their own white papers bragging. So in their case, we know nine times out of 10 exactly what their plan is. And it's so bold, the average person has trouble dealing with it. But I've noticed this planned failure thing. In other countries, they fire you if you screw up. That's the old <laughs> common sense way. Uh, That's right. Yeah, yeah. No. FEMA ordered a stand down in Katrina and screwed up to say, oh, look, we did terrible. Give us more funding. And I, I predicted that it wasn't going to work on purpose because the bill was going to screw everybody. So they want to act like, oh, you're getting screwed because it's messed up. It's not on purpose. It's not personal. And so that's why they're going to keep it screwed up forever. And then, oh, give me dictatorial power. I can selectively get in there and fix it, making him the hero, giving themselves a good crisis that won't go to waste. And so I don't know they did it on purpose. I mean, I can't prove it in court, but I know. I mean, I know because I've seen how these people operate. It's like as a, a long time ago, I used to be a deer hunter. And my dad taught me when you see a bunch of doe run out in cold weather, looking back over their shoulder, they're getting chased by a buck that's in the rut trying to have sex with them. Get your gun up and get ready. And yeah. nine times out of 10, when I see a bunch of doe running, looking back over their shoulder, the big buck's going to come running out or a coyote. Sorry, go ahead. I mean, it's not conspiracy theory that as a hunter, I know when doe are, you know, running from a buck. Go ahead. First of all, I think we need to reacquaint ourselves with a couple of rules. You know, there's this, um, I think it's called Pilger's Law, never believe anything until it's officially denied. And that, that, that's almost to the point right now where I'm almost, I, I, I don't want to think this, but I'm getting very close to it, where the official statement to me, I interpret almost as, oh, so that's what you want me to think, versus that's what happened. Tolstoy said that history would be a wonderful thing if only it were true. Looking past, looking at um, JFK and what I saw and where we are now 50 years later is, is beyond me. There's another thing, too, which is very interesting here. Now, I want everybody to, to pull yourself out of the matrix, if you will, that you're living in. And, and, and by the way, that movie was so prescient and minority report. I mean, I can't believe this was cloaked as entertainment, and many of us missed how vatic and how pythonic that was. But I want people to look at something. Alex, what we are missing here at the school level, at the government level, is a lack, a dearth, and the death of critical thinking. You know, in law school, there was a mnemonic that we use, IRAC, I-R-A-C. When you tackle a legal problem, it's issue, rule, analysis, conclusion. What is the issue? Focus on what we're talking about. Don't go off into the woods and talk about uh, Nixon or liberals or whatever. Just, 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 just focus it. What is the rule? What do we know? And that's why you could be talking about you don't want GMO. I just throw in, why are you racist? It's just meant to change the subject. So you'll say I'm not a racist. They've already won changing the subject. Let me tell you something. What happens is when you use any racist, misogynist, anti-Semitic, anything, when you use something, and you give too many false positives. You will habituate, desensitize people to the word and the sting of it so that when you are really there, it's like these uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria. 
when, when you say racist, 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 and you say, no, 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 this really is racist because racism is here and anti-Semitism is here, misogyny, is here, it's here. But when that's your answer, you turn off that sensitivity mode in people. There's also something here which is very interesting. You know, I heard a statistic. The, the uh, I, I call him the Ted Baxter sock puppet mainstream media. By the way, Ron Burgundy is not the first. Ted Baxter was so, speaking of depression, he saw it all. But whenever you hear the decline in American education scores, I think somewhere there are people almost wringing their hands in delight because they do not want people to be smart. Sure, enough. sure, the owners want dumb people. So stay there, we're going to come back and finish up with that story. Why is nascent iodine so important? Nascent iodine is so important because it goes directly to the thyroid. It's not bonded to a salt, which means it doesn't have to be broken down. And it's the most usable form. It's what the body uses. It's what the body is designed to use. If you have low energy levels, if you have pains, if you have thyroid problems, if you don't feel up to par, well, they've proven now that the fluoride and a lack of iodine causes a decreased IQ because you have all this stuff that builds up inside your system and builds up and builds up. And that's why some people, when they start taking iodine, will have what's called a Hertzheimer reaction or a detoxification reaction. But that's a good sign. That means you're detoxifying all that fluoride buildup, the mercury buildup in there, the bromine buildup in your system, and the chlorine buildup in your system. You don't want those things. All of those things have been proven as carcinogens. That's one of the reasons prostate cancer is on the rise, too, is because prostate takes up iodine. And the men that are lacking iodine causes the prostate to become cystic and causes the prostate to swell and eventually leads to prostate cancer. There's been an extreme rise in polycystic ovarian disease, PCOS, with women, fibrocystic breast disease because iodine is stored in the breast tissue, the ovaries, the prostate glands in men. It's utilized by every single cell in the body. Mm, why does this almost taste good compared to other iodine that tastes horrible? That's because it's real iodine atomic form. We wanted something that's going to go straight into the bloodstream and straight into the thyroid gland. We wanted to put it in a vegetable glycerin base. That's a USP kosher certified vegetable glycerin base. And that product is not tested on animals, it's vegan friendly, it's gluten free, it's GMO free. Of all the things I've done, nascent iodine was just absolutely amazing. So we developed with Dr. Group a double strength, low price. InfoWarsLife.com, Survival Shield, the atomic nascent iodine available right now. All right, Lionel, the media analyst, LionelMedia.com, final segment with him. I'm going to shut up, give you the floor, finish that story up you were getting into. And I want to ask you, where is the dinosaur media going? I mean, you've been giving hardcore libertarian commentary for decades, so your show's still popular in mainstream media. But if people don't get with the program, and I'm seeing a little bit more of this, like Dylan Radigan came out and exposed the predatory system and said, we're in an unequitable monopoly system, not a free market. And they basically got rid of him, even though he had the most popular show on that channel. Um, but, I mean, what is the establishment going to do with the media? Well, a couple of things, too, Alex. First of all, I, I want to thank you, and I want to wish you and your, your family the best this holiday season because we don't speak enough. And I do like to give you my, my thoughts of love and respect. Back at you, brother. Now, a couple of things, too. Uh, first and foremost, I, I, please let me uh, comment about this animal thing because I'm going to be doing a commentary on this tonight. And this is, this is one of the things. I want to teach somebody something. If ever you are arguing any kind of legal argument, the answer, Alex, that, will, uh, that you can use for every, every uh, legal question there is that has ever been posited by the mind of man, the answer that will always work is it depends. And I'm telling you, I'm not... Fudging on that, I'm telling you it's the truth. Here is a question that I have. We know, like Potter Stewart said, he said he knew uh, obscenity when he saw it. We all know, for example, about this business about animals being uh, basically treated as humans for purposes of habeas corpus, and there's uh, this uh, the non-human rights project. Did you know, in this movie Blackfish, this documentary about orcas, did you know, speaking of facts, that they have looked at the anatomy of a brain of an orca, of, a, of the Cretacean species, bottlenose dolphin, porpoises, dolphins, and they have something called a paralympic system, meaning... Two brains. Well, yes, but their, this particular lobe, their sensitivity for attachment, 
is greater than even that of a human. So when you take a, 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 a whale away from its mother. They grieve. Forever. Now, that being said, does that change the equation? What happens if somebody were to say that you, who let's say keep kosher or halal uh, uh, dietary systems, that kosher slaughtering, that that's deemed inhumane? I don't know where this is going. What I always tell people is be very, very careful with this because like years ago they said it's not nice to fool Mother Nature. But when you go into some areas, understand, number one, who is behind it? Always ask. Because if I was, let's say, and I'm not saying these people are nefarious, but if I were a really evil person, what I would do is I would always introduce myself by taking a position that everybody agreed on. And then as I became friendly and people liked my cause, whatever it was, then I'd stick it to them. So that's number one. Number two, never, ever, ever apologize for a question you have. You know, kids always say, why, Daddy? Why? Why? That's right. They act like it's bad under political correctness to even ask questions or have or talk. And it, it's amazing uh, that if you even make an observation, they, they just want us to shut down and do what we're told and only accept the official story. One minute left. What's going to happen to the mainstream media? The mainstream media right now is going to have to understand that when it comes to news, this is the opportunity it has because human beings love information and they love thinking. And it is completely possible for mainstream uh, corporate entities to expand their area of coverage and break away because the information that is out there that people might say, well, it's a little offbeat or a little bit different, that is what people love. And all I'm saying is never apologize for thinking, never apologize for asking a question, critically think no matter what you do and you will never go wrong. And Alex, thank you again for allowing me the opportunity to be here with you, my dear friend. If you and your family, the best this holiday season, sir. You too. God bless. All right, there goes Lionel. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.